Uh, hi, so I'm Tomislav. Uh, I work in Infinum uh, in the JavaScript department, and I've been using, I've been working with CSS. I've been working with CSS uh, for a few years now, and today I'll talk about relative metrics in CSS, namely rems and ems. So let's start with the basics, uh, the what and the why. I'll start with an example. So let's say you're using some generic component with a specific font size, line, line height, and padding. And you want this uh, component to be fluid and responsive. And you want it to look kind of the same uh, in every, in every, uh, in, at, ev at every device. So you've got some breakpoints. You increase the font size by a ratio. And you want to increase the line height and painting by the same ratio. So the main problem is here, you have to repeat yourself. You have to calculate the pixel size for line height for the padding and multiply it with the same value that you multiply your font size with. This is not very nice to see. This is actually uh, not dry and not cool at all. So how can we fix this? Uh, enter M's. M is a dynamic value based on its parent's pixel value. What this means, it's a ratio between the desired pixel value of the component and the inherited pixel value from its parent. So this is how it would look like if we're using M's. So this is pretty dry. This is easier to maintain and pretty good looking. So uh, you just write your font size, line height, and padding in M's and uh, declare the, its parent's font size in pixels or percentages. Namely, why we use percentages here is because some component is a direct, uh, direct descendant of the body element. and if you declare the body element uh, sizes in percentages, uh, it's relative to the settings that the user set on his browser's uh, native font size. So basically, when you're declaring font size of 100%, it's, uh, d by default, it equals to 16 pixels, and it allows the browser to set, uh, to user to set their own font size. So uh, this is pretty cool. It's uh, easier to read, to write, and everything. But uh, when you use it, uh, you'll probably, pretty fast, you'll run into some problems with it. Uh, so for example, we have some news block uh, with a news link element. Let's say we set some font size on the body, 10 pixels for this example. You set uh, 1.5 m's on the news block and 1.5 m's from uh, to the news leak element. So if you're transitioning from a static base slicing with pixels, you're probably expecting uh, the news block and the news link element to have uh, the same font size. But this is not entirely true. This is how it would look like rendered. So what happens here is actually expected because you have the news a news block, uh, its parent is body, and it's inheriting the, f the font from the body and multiplying by 1.5 m's, you're getting 15 pixels. And the news link element, since it's a child of the news block, it's multiplying its value but by 1.5 m's, and uh, you're getting 22.5 m's. So this is something that's called compounding, and it can prove a bit uh, hard to maintain if you're using M's in the entire layout. So how can we get around this? How can we use something better? Uh, enter rems. Uh, rems are root M's. They're basically a ratio between the desired pixel value of, of the component and the root pixel value. By root pixel value, uh, we mean the, uh, the pixel value that's declared on the HTML element. So if we revisit the Trump news uh, example we just seen. Uh, the, uh, the CSS is basically the same. You just substitute rems, rems with rems, and you get something uh, more expected, like 15 pixels, and it looks pretty cool. So what are they good for? Uh, well, I want to revisit the fact that we use the percentages on the body and the HTML element. Because uh, by using this, if you're using uh, M's and RAMs in your entire layout, uh, you're basically uh, allowing the user to change the font size. And if you're really testing it out and uh, trying hard, you can really uh, adapt your entire layout to the user's browser uh, font size, uh, regardless of what they set it to. 
But other than that, I want to discuss uh, when it's best to use REMS and when, when it's best to use EMS. So let's take a look at this example where you have a, a generic header. It has a font size in REMS and some padding declared in REMS, and you want to enlarge it. You put a modifier class on it uh, that multiplies the font size by two, and it's all good, but it's not ac actually what you want. So here we have a header that increases font size, but the paddings remain the same, and it actually changed this. It's, uh, it's, it doesn't look the same as, as it did before. Uh, so what you do now is you have to increase the padding by the same value that you increase the font size with. And this is all cool and stuff, but it's actually not any different from the workflow you had before when you used uh, pixels. So in this case, it would probably be best to use the M's on, on the padding. So the header always adapts to, to uh, it adapts its padding to, to the font size declared on it. Okay, so when you wrap this up from this example, uh, REMS should probably be, be best used for any scaling dependent on the browser's root font size, and EMS should be used for scalability within the context of the, of the mentioned component. So what this means is if you're using a naming convention like BEM, it would probably be, be, be best for, for you to use REMS on declaring font sizes on, on the blocks themselves, so they're easier to maintain and control, and you should use EMS for any attributes and elements that are di directly being scaled with the uh, font size that you put on the block. So for this, you have to con always talk to your designer uh, to conclude what, what has to be scaled with what and what has to be more static. But in most cases, all elements and uh, relative attributes should be scaled with EMS. Uh, okay, so let's talk about browser compatibility. Can you use them anywhere? Uh, EMS, yes, you can use them everywhere. They've been around forever and they're compatible with any browser ever. With REMS, it's a bit different. Uh, they have a yeah, weak IE support. Uh, uh, they've been adapted to IE uh, 11, but even there, they, you have some problems with line heights on the pseudo elements and stuff like that. But it's easy to write fallbacks in pixels, so this is not a big problem. Uh, if you're using a preprocessor pre, uh, pre like SAS or SCSS or whatever, uh, there are functions uh, and mixings that can help you transition from pixels to, to EMS and REMS. So in SCSS, I found this Chris Coyer's function for, uh, for writing EMS in pixels. So basically, you have to provide the pixel value and the context of its parent element. And uh, it's optional if it's a direct descending of the browser. It, you just have to supply the pixel value. And uh, for REMS, there's also a function that does the same thing uh, and a small mixing that can help you calculate, uh, that, that can help you with the fallback for the, for the pixels. Uh, OK, so to wrap things up, uh, if you're willing to transition from pixel-based values uh, to M's and REMS, there are really numerous, uh, numerous uh, good things you can get out of it. Uh, there are numerous tools like the mixings and functions I just, uh, I just uh, talked about that can help you with the transition. Just uh, be sure to uh, use REMS where they're best, best uh, Sorry, <laughs> where you where they're best for the case that you're using them, and M's were their best, and uh, contact your designer, tell them, consider their opinion on them, on them, and yeah, that's it. Good luck. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Thomas? Oh yeah, questions. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Do you have questions? <coughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you.